before we get to the q and I just want to talk about the VIX. I just want to put in perspective. I'm not sure if people understand. I get some questions sometimes about the VIX, what it is or how it works. I mentioned it on the call a while back that I got up to 36. People don't know what the 36 means. So the VIX is, uh, this is through the options market. It's calculated as, as what the implied volatility. So what the market, so it's, not, so it's not the historical volatility of what the S&P has already done. It's by looking at the pricing of the options, what those options are implying in terms of what, they, what traders think or what they're paying for, what they think that volatility will be in over the next year. So this is an annualized number. So let's say it's if they think it's thirty six percent, you have to you have to deannualize that to get that to a daily basis. So to do that, you have to, to you have to divide by the square root of the number of, of days in the year. So that's about two hundred and fifty two. So as as a general rule, if you want to know what kind of a daily move to expect on the S and P, take the VIX divided by about uh, sixteen. So uh, let's say so if you have a VIX of thirty divided by sixteen, that means the market's implying a move every single day that the market will move by about 1.875%. If you get a VIX of 40, you, you could expect each day for the market to move about two and a half percent. So that's why, you know, you know, there's nothing magic about why the market will tend to bottom when the VIX gets up to a high level. It's just that, you know, stop and think that, you know, the entire market is being priced to move every single day at two and a half percent at 40 that's rather significant. It means that there's extreme uncertainty. It means that, that basically investors don't know how to price the market anymore. They, they can expect, expect just about anything and they're willing to pay a very high premium to protect themselves for further downside. So it's kind of encapsulating in terms of prices that uh, people are fearful, people are paying, will pay uh, a very high amount to insure themselves at this point. And that typically always happens at market bottoms. Can they get more extreme? Of course, look like at COVID, you got up to 80 85, look, 85 divided by 16. I mean, that that was implying that each and every day the market could move by over 5%. So that, that means it's basically saying the market has no idea of, of what fair value is at this point. And um, obviously it doesn't mean that things like, you know, just because we're at 40 or, you know, 37, like we've recently been, that you can't have this kind of a spike here. It could, it just, it, it, it's just a good uh, way to understand what kind of environment you're working in. When you have a VIX of 36, 40, it's going to be volatile. I mean, um, and, you know, traders are paying up for that. And so that's why you have to kind of understand that's why bottom usually happen because when you're usually in a rush to pay for insurance, you know, there's already been a lot of damage and that's typical of market bottom. So it, it, the point being, I just want to give people a little bit of context as to what these numbers actually mean and how you can kind of incorporate that. And the VIX can kind of help you even in your own personal understanding. Like, oh, if we have a VIX at 36 or a VIX at 40 and I'm expecting a two and a half percent move every day in the S&P, geez, you know, what kind of portfolio exposure do I want in that environment? If I'm a conservative investor, do I want to be 100% invested? Uh, if uh, each and every day the S&P can move by 2.5%, that means my stocks, if they have a, a beta of two, I expect my portfolio to move every day by 5%. I don't know many people who are conservative that can, that can withstand um, that kind of movement in the marketplace. So the VIX could be a good tool in one, trying to find market bottoms. Um, and two, also to kind of, help you gauge what kind of portfolio exposure you think can work for you. And by using the VIX, dividing it by 16, it gives you a good actual number to base yourself off as to what to expect in terms of volatility for the marketplace. So I just want to explain that a little bit.